Welcome to Geology, a channel dedicated to making concepts in biology simple, easy to understand and interesting. In our previous topics, we have seen the structure of flower. We have also studied about the different types of pollinations where we have understood that for the sexual reproduction in flower, flowering plants, there is a process called pollination where the pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the stigma of the flowers. Now in this video, we are going to delve a little more deeper into the pollen grains. We are going to see the structure of pollen grains and we are also going to understand what happens during the germination of pollen grains. Let's begin. So pollen grains are also known as microspores and these are reproductive units which are produced within the lobes of the anther. Pollen grains could be granular, ellipsoidal, circular, oval, triangle or of different shapes. In a typical pollen grain, there is an outer coating or an outer layer which is called exine and an inner coat which is known as intine. How can you remember it? External is outside, right? So the outer layer is exine and internal generally in is inside, right? So the intine is the inner wall or the inner coat of the pollen grains. Now exine being outside, its work is to protect the inner contents. So exine is tough, it is cutinized and it is resistant to mechanical injury. We have seen that pollen grains travel by air, travel by water, get attached to the bodies of insects. So there is a lot of possibility of damage to happen so that the damage does not happen to the inner contents, the exine is resistant to mechanical injury. Now, the exine can be smooth or it can have spines or wart-like structures or tubular outgrowth-like structures. The intine is very thin, it is delicate, it is elastic in nature and it is cellulosic wall layer. The pollen grains also have small pores in the exine through which the pollen tube comes out during germination. These pores are known as germ pores. Now before germination, a pollen grain contains only one nucleus or a single nucleus which is surrounded by the cytoplasm. Let us now see the germination of pollen grain in details. Now, what does it mean? So, pollen germination is a collective event right from the landing of the pollen grain on the stigma to the growth of the pollen tubes and then the entry of the pollen tubes into the embryo sac. Right? So in angiosperms, the pollen grains after being liberated from the anther, they are carried to the stigma where they germinate. The intine out comes out of the germ pores as a small projection. Right? So the inner wall comes out of these pores. And one of the tubes elongate and it forms what is known as the pollen tube. Now, this pollen tube goes through the stigma and into the style and as it keeps growing, it dissolves the tissue with the help of some enzymes which it produces and then finally, it reaches the ovary where it enters the ovule through a minute pore on the ovule which is known as micropyle. Okay. Now, in the meanwhile, the nucleus which is present inside the pollen grain, it divides and it forms two, two nuclei. One is known as the tube nucleus 
and the other is known as the generative nucleus. Now the generative nucleus divides into two sperm nuclei or male gametes. Thus the two sperm nuclei and the tube nucleus are carried along as the pollen tube enters into the ovary. So with this we have come to an end of what is germination of uh, the pollen grains. So we have seen in this topic about the structure of pollen grains and also how the pollen grain germinates and the different number of nuclei which are present inside the pollen grains. In the next portion we are going to see a few question and answers from the, uh, from the, from the topic we have covered now. Um, stay tuned for the next video where we are going to look at the structure of the ovule.